Hey everyone, we'll be going over how to create a simple waypoint displaying distance between the point and player. I'll be going over some topics that go in some basic elements using the widget editor, widget animation, using a widget inside an actor as a component, and calculating the distance and setting it in real time. Let's get started. Begin by creating our waypoint widget and insert a size box setting its override width to 100 and height to 150. Then change this setting from fill screen to desired on screen. Add a vertical box, which organizes its content vertically, which gives its children settings of how it will sort. This will have a canvas panel and text inside. Canvas panels are basically just a free room area for whatever its contents to move around, uh, be scaled, uh, etc. Then set the canvas's panel size to full. We're going to add an image to our canvas panel. Set this image's anchor to full, then padding being 15, left and right, then 20 for top and bottom. Next, we need to import our icon, which we can do by either dragging and dropping or using the import button in the editor. I provided a simple edited icon off of Google in the description. Now, set the brush to our new icon, either through dragging and dropping or clicking on the asset and using the arrow next to the brush input. Then, I'm going to set its color to a slightly pinkish red. Obviously, pick whichever suits your project. Then, for our text, we're going to make sure to name this and set it as a variable. Next, set the size to auto with both alignments being centered. Then for some additional style settings, we're going to use the Roboto thin font, skew amount 2.3, outline size to one, and shadow offsets Y value to 1.5. Next, we're gonna set up a bobbing animation using the widget animator. To animate, we select the desired element, which is the size box in this case, then add it as a track inside our animation, which then allows us to add additional tracks to said element we'd like to animate, which will be transform. Key zero gets automatically added, so scrolling through the timeline to one second, for our Y translation, this will be negative 50, then our two seconds will be zero. Finally, for the widget inside the graph on event construct, we're going to add the play animation node, using the bob animation, which now appears as a variable. We just drag it out as the animation to play. We'd like this to loop, so setting loops to play to zero will do just that. Now we're going to create a new actor, which will be our marker that we can place inside our levels. Here we'll be adding a widget component, which has several settings on how we display a widget in the world. We're going to adjust some of these. Starting off with the space, we want this to be screen so that it follows the player's camera at all times if looked at. Next, we need to assign the widget class to the widget we just created. So for me, this is widget here at the bottom. If you have trouble finding yours, you can search for it. Next, our draw size will be the same amount of those values previously set on our size box, so X being 100, Y being 150. Final setting, pivot on X will be 0.5, on Y will be 0.2. Now we head over to our event graph, where on begin play we're going to drag out our widget component, using this to get the get widget node, which gets the actual object reference, which we now will use for a cast node to our waypoints widget. Out of this cast, we're going to get our distance text, which we promote to a new variable. Next, on event tick, we get the actor location and our player's pawn, which we also need to get the actor location from, which both will plug into a distance vector node. Order of this doesn't really matter, though I put the waypoint location in V1 and player location in V2. Next, we divide the return value by 100 and plug this into a truncate, which this makes sure our flow isn't full of decimal values. Then, we're going to plug this truncate into an append's top pin, which make sure this append is for a string. Typically, you need to scroll down the list to find this. For the bottom pin, we're going to type space m. Finally, drag out our distance text variable and get a set text node. Plug our append into this and we're done. Additionally, for organization, I collapsed these nodes and named it to calculate distance text. Last thing you need to do is drag this marker actor anywhere into the level and test it out. And now here is the final result. Of course, in your projects, feel free to customize and or expand this in your own various ways. If you guys found this tutorial helpful, I would really appreciate a like. If you'd like to see more, then subscribe. And if you want to support me or have access to tutorial project files, I have a Patreon. Thank you so much for watching.